welcome everyone from the Magnets team. And um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we would like to welcome Janine Arujo do Carmo from the University of Sao Paulo. And she's going to present a, a talk with the title Polymagnetic Record of Skeletons from North Af uh, Africa. Thank you. Uh, Janine, the floor is yours. Uh, can you see? That works fine. Thank you. Okay. So, hi. <laughs> uh, first, I'd like to, to thank you for the invitation and say that I'm very excited to be here. Uh, thank you, everyone who is watching and everyone who will watch this recording later. <laughs> Today, I'm going to talk about the paleomagnetic record of spilotons in North Africa, but more specifically, I'm going to talk about fast variations in, uh, in the geomagnetic field and how spilotons can help us to understand them. So, um, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, so, this presentation will focus on Levantine Iron Age anomaly, which is corresponding yeah, with. Costly. Oh, I'm sorry? Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Which correspond uh, to extremely high geomagnet geomagnetic field intensities record in Eastern Europe and Mid East. And different from the South America anomaly that it's observed today, uh, the Levantine anomaly is only studied through paleomag paleomagnetic data and does not have occurrence nowadays. So here is the first two just for just for here is the uh, two first works to report this anomaly. And in the 11th, 11th anomaly, two peaks in the geomagnetic field uh, is occurring, one and at nine eight, and other in seven forty uh, years before the common era. And it's these age, these ages were uh, better uh, determined by Shore et al. in 2016. And the anomaly generation mechanisms are still unknown. So the termination of time intensity and spatial extent, it's important to understand what causes it. In this way, it would be possible to know about more about the time dynamics of the outer core. So uh, here we present um, where this anomaly is better defined. So in this east portion from Europe, uh, there are also a number of works that can uh, restrict this extension in the northwest of this anomaly, but uh, the western limit on Africa is poorly determined. So here we have few data, and uh, in the Canary Islands, Canary Islands, we have uh, there are studies reporting a high palynthesis spike. However, this spike is not so well defined. Uh, there may be a difference of 1500 years between the origin of the anomaly and its appearance in Canary Island. So, uh, in this work, uh, they evaluate the intensity of the geomagnetic field over time and try to map this Western drift movement. But the lack of paleomagnetic data on Africa continent does not allow them to understand how the anomaly starts in uh, Canary Island. So the poor spatial and temporal distribution of data from North Africa creates difficulties to understand behavior of the anomaly in this region. And to understand it, we need a large volume of uh, paleomagnetic data covering the period of the anomaly. 
so to help with this discussion, we use uh, the record of a set of spirituals from Morocco, composed by uh, three stalagmites collected in the Winting Doing Cave near to the Canary Island. So uh, here is the Levant region and the Canary Island. And, and why do we use spiritons? So how can spiritons help us to understand fast field variations? First, spiritons are crystalline deposits formed in caves as a result of precipitation from supersaturated solutions. And spiritons of calcium carbonate or calcite are the most common. Here you can observe some kinds of spiritons. Here we have some stalagmites, stalactites, uh, columns. Behind this box, we have uh, curtains. So you, you, when we do uh, paleomagnetic studies, usually we, we work with stalagmites or flowstones uh, that be this huge um, amount of uh, carbonate. So, um, so uh, and now how spiritons can record the geomagnet field? In a simple way, there is a production of magnetite uh, in the soil above the cave. The soil rich in magnetic minerals is transported by water into the cave through the folds and fissures uh, in the bedrock. These minerals are then deposited of the surface of these uh, spiritons through the dripping water. Another way to have the triple material inside the caves is due the fluid events or wind actions. And these events bring allogenic uh, material into, into the cave. So during the percolation of the water in the cave, the bedrock dissolves and solution is enriched in carbonate. So stalagmites are formed uh, by dripping water, uh, dripping by dripping a uh, supersaturated solution, solution of calcium carbonate. These droplets bring with them the triton material from the soil above the cave. And this material is rich in magnetic, magnetic minerals that uh, can record the geomagnetic field. When these minerals are blocked between the calcite minerals, they can record this, uh, this good behavior. Um, so this and some of uh, minerals that were found, found in and spelletons. And despite the low magnetic intensity of uh, stalagmites of spelletons, so stalagmites can be used to obtain information about the paleomagnetic field. And they have some important advantages when you compare with other traditional artists and paleomagnetists. So the locking time it's long enough to allow the magnetic moments to align, but it's rapid enough for a accurate recording of the geomagnetic field behavior. Uh, Spinal attempts are unaffected by post depositional effects and can be dated with high accuracy. It's like, uh, if you think and you see, here's the layers, it's like a very small sedimentary basin in which uh, each layer could, be, could provide an annual information of the geomagnetic field. But it's not so easy. Each layer has few magnetic minerals, so it's necessary to measure a certain volume to reach the resolution of magnetometers. Uh, here I show the, the marking of these samples. Usually you pick the center of the samples, the center region, 
of the stalagmites to avoid secondary effects, effects causing for this, uh, this slope. So we avoid this, these regions. Uh, here I show the, chrono pro the chronological models that we have made from U Uranitoro data and use a style, a style age algorithm. So this sample, win one, has few A's because the, this sample has lots of uh, detrital content and this, this disturb uh, the technique to date the samples. So we use this sample just to define the appropriate protocol, the more appropriate protocols and laboratory, laboratory techniques for paleomagnetic uh, investigation. And after we did some, after we, we did do some tests here, when apply the best techniques on the other samples, win two and win three. And when we look at these uh, age models, we see that we have some uh, two EAGLES here. Uh, and if we calculate the growth rating, we see that they have a slow rate, like growth rating of points uh, zero 0.04 millimeters per year on average. So uh, the specimens have an average of five millimeters on height and were prepared with a thin saw blade uh, of 0.4 millimeters to avoid the loss of material. And um, here is our uh, pilot sample, <laughs> pilot test sample. So our magnetic measurements were performed here in Brazil in the SPMAG using a squid magnetometer. We start with AF degaussing and saw, um, and saw that has this rest of a uh, remanence yeah, yeah, indicating that presence of high coercivity minerals. So in blue we have our oh, in blue we have our AF treatment and yellow is the thermal treatment. So uh, we did the tr thermal treatment, the, the thermal demagnetization to characterize this other magnetic carrier. And the thermal demagnetization curves of 9% of the samples show this similar behavior. It's a gradual intensity decrease above uh, 200 degrees and a abrupt drop after 660 degrees. Uh, and a total loss of the remaining is at 68 degrees, supporting a stronger density of presence of hematite. So we call, we'll calculate both directions of the AF and thermal treatments. And we, we calculate them and see that they are comp compatible, showing that the stalagmites has a robust uh, repos reproducibility and that the positional mechanism is reliable for the determination of the past geomagnetic field. So uh, we did some RIM curves, acquisition curves, and these curves show the presence of magnetic, of two magnet components, one with a higher coercivity. Uh, do the hematite and other with a lower points coercivity that we interpret it as magnetite. But uh, we still need to evaluate the level of oxidation of this uh, magnetite. 
So we have a measure in this in this set of uh, stalagmites. Uh, and if we see the S ratio, it's possible for other two samples, win two and win three. It's possible to see that that the mixing of hematite and magnetite along the whole in speleotems, but without much variation. So we have mixture or all the speleotems, the whole speleotems, but without a great uh, variation. Uh, so after I did that test in, in win one, uh, we applied the IFAF demagnetization uh, on speedotens win two and win three. And we have the same behavior of the win one. So our intensity starts to decrease and then remain a part of this magnetization. Uh, but we can see that there are, there are parts that it's really stable. We have a really straight stable signal without secondary components. The only specimen that show a secondary component is this wind tree. And this specimen were discarded for, from analysis because it presents a higher value of angular deviation. And we, and when we see this this, uh, this figure, we can see that we can see that uh, levels with higher concentration of the triton, the triton material has a higher intensity. Um, so both styling meets has a stable the stable components. Uh, here in this figure shows the results that we obtained from win two and win three. So win two with these green spots and green three with red. And we are comparing with the geomagnetic models. So the geomagnetic models is those, is this first continuous curves. And here is uh, our age. So uh, when you compare it, these results with these geomagnetic models from for the region of Morocco, we can see that first our results, results are internally consistent. And, and the di directional data generally agrees with the, with the geomagnetic model. So here, uh, for declination, we have a better answer. And inclination, we have this, this answer. And both, uh, and both data and uh, declination and inclination match with the models. Uh, and we can see that both samples can record this rapid variation, fast variations in the geomagnetic field, including this abrupt change in direction for the last uh, two years, 2000 years. And here is the, the filter that, uh, that we use. So we apply a filter for MAD, uh, 15 degrees of MAD. And all samples that has the dense value, dense value uh, over the MAD values, we cut from this analysis as well, because our compound is not going to the center of the side of the and it would not represent the primary uh, 
direction of the jet magnetic field. So here we are comparing uh, our directional data with the, the volcanic data from Canaries Islands and Morocco. And we can see that have a good correlation between the spell attempts and the volcanic records. And here in inclination, we have some ice carter interval here, but it's, uh, but there's a good correlation and mainly in this first 2000 years here. Um, so to determine the relative paleontic uh, we apply the pseudo method on wind samples. Take care, taking care to choose the same interval in which we determine our characteristic component. So it's difficult to work with the sample because we have this mixture of magnetite and emmatite. We can see here in our our right our right plot, and we need to be careful when we do paleontic uh, relative paleontic in this kind of material. So uh, we did it really careful. And when we compare our data with uh, models and, and volcanic data, uh, we can see first here when we see models, they are uh, they have some difference. They are quite quite constant, but they have some difference uh, by the intensity uh, in intensity mod intensity values. And when we compare our our data with these these models, we see that our relative paleontic results are in agreement with the geomagnetic models, mainly for the last two thousand years. However, there is a systematic difference here between our data and the geomagnetic models. And in this interval between zero and a thousand uh, years before the common era, this in and this interval comprised the Levantine anomaly. So this time interval is also characterized by, characterized by a strong dispersion in the absolute palintensity from the Canary Islands. So when we compare uh, our data here, uh, with sediments from Alboran Island, that is the south of Spain, this, this blue star, it's quite uh, near from our, our spot. Uh, we can see a similar trend with low intensity values. <laughs> so with low intensity values. And, and here is the, the record of run declination, inclination, and intensity. And here we have this same trend. So um, could it confirm that, that this region is out of the Levantine anomaly influence? Or uh, at the same time, we had this trend. Uh, we had this noisy behavior with increase of the increase of uh, pattern intensity value. So it must be better investigated. And if we consider that this data, uh, this data 
that we are obtaining and also this data from overrun represents the reality. So maybe the geomagnetic models need to be updated for this region. And, uh, and to be honest, uh, we need to interpret more this, this data for now. And in summary, uh, we have this for this work for now. So we have this magnetic mineralogy is interpreted as a, com a compost of magnetite and hematite along the whole spiritons. And where the remnant magnetization in when one is stable for both magnetic carriers. The calculated directions are consistent uh, for AF and the thermal analysis. Uh, Win 2 and Win 3 records are internally consistent and the directional data generally agrees with the geomagnetic model. And we, we can see it uh, in the declination and inclination uh, data directions. And our relative pine intensity shows a meaningful difference for intensity be between zero and a uh, thousand years before the common era when it's compared with geomagnetic models. However, it has similar behavior to sediments from Alberon. Uh, this time interval is also characterized by a uh, strong dispersion in absolute is that from Canary, Canary Island. So could, could be our region out for this, for the influenza of this, the Levantine anomaly. And why we can see that higher intensity in Canary Island. So we need to answer this, this question yet. So it's that, Thanks everyone. Thanks to everyone that is watching. Thank you very much, Janini. Uh, let's give a, a big round of applause. Great, uh, happy skeletons there. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you very much. And um, now there is uh, space for uh, questions. Should uh, anyone have in some? Uh, you can use the chat if you want, and I can read them up, or you can ask, uh, unmute yourself and ask the question. Okay, so I will read the question that is in a chat by Sayoa. So it says, hi Janini, uh, great presentation. Sorry, because I don't have a mic. Just a curiosity. Have you compared your RPI, RPI with uh, the shock Iron Age model. This model is focused on the study of the Levantine Iron Age anomaly, incorporating new data from Iberia. Thanks. Uh, it's the next step I need to compare, and I'm. I want to. I want to see if there's some different uh, behavior with different models. So it's it's a great tip. <laughs> Thanks. It's, yeah, it's obviously a work in progress, but uh, there's a lot of work already uh, done. Yeah, Sayova says thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Any other questions from the audience? Kathy has a question. Uh, yes, please go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, thanks. Uh, very interesting results, Janine. Thanks for sharing them. I'm uh, wondering whether you have any ideas about uh, differences in the uh, rock magnetic properties in the interval where you have this disagreement with the models, um, or whether you think that there could in fact be some sort of, um, I, I know that in stereothems we, we hope that we're going to get a very detailed uh, uh, record in time. I'm wondering if there's something that could be uh, smoothing that out or disturbing it in that interval. So I didn't get 
all the, <laughs> the questions, I'm sorry. If there is a correlation with, between your rock magnetic properties and the, the region where there is the disagreement within the models and the... Uh, when and we the did this analysis, it's like, it's the, when we have this, variations in our and in the magnetic directions or we we have this problem in the pollen and relative pen intensity it's the most stable uh sign in the our speedotem there's less uh, changing so i need to i need to analyze, analyze this better to bring to you this 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 question but there's no correlation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other question? I don't don't see anyone raising their hand, or they. Uh, Okay, then I don't know. It's another minute if somebody wants to take the courage and <laughs> ask uh, ask other questions. Well, maybe I'll just make a comment. I think it's yeah. uh, really kind of puzzling that we don't you don't see a record of this high field strength in this region because you'd expect if this was a signal that was coming from the Earth's core, you would expect it to have a pretty broad regional extent. So you wouldn't really expect that you would see this. It seems like you see a low in the field strength there, which, um, which is also what you see in the, the Spanish sediments. So there's really a, a, a bit of a puzzle there that needs to be uncovered about the differences. Thanks, Cathy, uh, 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 for the comment. Maybe additional rock magnetic measurements can help. But then, of course, it's also relative fall intensity. So uh, it's uh, hard to calibrate it then to more ab absolute values. Um, yeah, th thanks again. Um, Andre, you have a question? Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Eugenie. Uh, it uh, was a very illuminating talk, but well, I was um, uh, sort of uncertain whether to ask this or not, and but still, what is your idea of where hematite uh, comes from uh, to your spell attempts? Is it uh, or, uh, is it brought for, uh, uh, from uh, uh, from the surface uh, together with magnetite, or it's formed in situ? What do you think? Uh, to be honest, I would like to have part of the, the main carbonate, the bedrock, to did some measurements and compare. And I didn't have this kind of sample. So for now, I I don't know. I yep. need to someone to collect, yep. collect the Good. sample for me. Yeah, great. Because uh, you see, the reason, the reason was that uh, yeah. your S ratio is... Uh, yeah. Your yes, S ratio is very, very stable uh, along the record, along, along the pelletum. That means that the uh, okay. ratio, uh, the volumetric ratio of the two minerals is also fairly stable. And I really can't, uh, uh, can't quite, that should be so, quite a climb, a climb just how it comes right. That's the question. The, I would ask my sorry maybe it was my connection yeah. that uh, broke a little bit oh uh, i don't know uh, oh, okay anyway L let it be let it be that way yeah okay thank so, you yeah no I, I i don't know if it's my connection maybe you can type the question sorry mm, no, well uh, i think i think uh, 
I think if uh, Zanin will work more with this data, well, that that will come by itself. Uh, the question it's uh, the question yeah and uh, uh, anita there is another uh, there is another question in the chat uh, could you read this oh yes thank you sorry i didn't yeah. see uh, my yeah. connection is, is is quite bad i apologize thank you andre thank you very much so uh danny okay danny skent uh, is asking question hi AF and thermal demonization are not independent with the magnetite and hematite carriers until the magnetic temperature above 580 degrees centigrade. Are the directions above 580 centigrade different than lower temperature or AF direction? Thanks, Dennis. Sorry, did, did, was it clear, Janine? Okay. Ah, yeah, uh, to be honest, first and that magnetic, uh, my, my first analysis was to apply AF and in the same uh, sample we put in the, 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 the thermal treatment. And so I didn't do the thermal treatment to the magnetized magnetite first and then magnetite. But when we compare just this sign for hematite with that we have in AF treatment, they are the same. They are compact, they are not the same, but they are coherent. So I don't know if that I answered this question. But I think yes. it is, yeah. Th thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think uh, I think we had uh, enough uh, good uh, discussion. And um, if you could uh, unshare your screen, and uh, and we can all give another round of applause to Janini. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So uh, let me share my screen. Sorry. So thanks uh, again, uh, Janini, for your presentation. I would like to remind you that our next two um, webinars are the 4th of May with Sanya Panowska, and then the 18th of May uh, with Win Williams. And then we are gonna have a break for the EGU online in the end of May and uh, more, more uh, magnets to come and more speakers are welcome. And we would like to remind you that this recording then will be made available on the YouTube channel. And so thank you very much again for coming and we hope to see you next time.